Welcome to the Nature Journal Connection. I'm your host, John Muir Laws. Today I'm exploring out in the Point Reyes National Seashore. I didn't think I'd be doing any filming today, but I found these really cool sort of semi-permanent dunes with plants growing through them that I couldn't help but investigate in my Nature Journal. I thought, let's make a, 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 a video and see if I can share this, this with you folks. But the problem was I didn't have my, my tripod with me, so I've made a makeshift tripod out of driftwood and seaweed tied together, and I think it's going to work. Ah. So we're going to have a look today. I'm going to be investigating these cool semi-permanent dunes. But the big thing I wanted to explore with you today is the idea of metadata metadata. So anytime we're making observations and getting those observations put down in our nature journal, that information we're recording, that's data. That's scientific data. Data is the evidence that scientists use to make meaning out of the world around us. So what's metadata? Metadata is the data about the data, the data behind the data. So that is, if I'm out here recording this, this, this information, the location, and that is the where of it, as well as the when. So perhaps what, what day of the month it is, what month is it, what year is it, uh, what has this year been like? Sort of the, the, the big picture of when and where, that's my metadata. And see, here's the, the interesting thing. If I, if I, um, just have some information I've got about dunes. That's, that's neat. But the moment I, I put in the location and the, um, and, and the when I have date stamped and geo referenced all this information. And that brings my scientific, the, the scientific value of the work that I've doing, doing to a much higher level because it's tied to a place, it's tied to a specific time of year. Now, you get to decide how much metadata is necessary, but I suggest that you always get in the habit of including some metadata. The easiest, the, the sort of the, the most basic form would be just to write down the date. Here's the date, this is, but, but sometimes if I'm, let's say looking at some, uh, I'm seeing some cool courtship behavior between birds, maybe that's something that only happens at a certain time of the day. So not just saying the date, but in that situation, saying when during the day, what time it was that I observed this, what time was it that uh, there were worms coming up out of the ground, what time was that? I want to get that information down um, on my, my page as well, if I think that, that that level of specificity of the when is going to be important. You also want to sort of back up and think about big picture, what's going on here. If there's just been a big rainstorm and now you're seeing these worms coming up, in my metadata, I should say, this, is, this information is recorded, recorded after a, a, a heavy rainstorm. So any big picture information about what is going on in the place, any big picture information about where specifically I am, if this is something where I might want to find my way back to, you essentially, you can make yourself a treasure map. Where did I find these cool, these cool observations? If you are going hiking in a park, it's great to have a little map of the park with you. That way you can draw a little icon of part of the map or even cut out part of the map that you were given and when you entered the park glue that down into your nature journal and sort of like, this is the location where I was. You can be that specific. Um, if you don't have, if you don't have say a park map, if you have uh, somebody or you or somebody you're with has a telephone with you and you can bring up 
online maps that show your location. You can zoom back and then draw a little map based on the little icon that you see there on the screen. So you can make a little map from that little map. So the where and the when of your observations, that's the metadata. That is the data behind the data. And what we want to do as good scientists is just get in the regular habit of always having metadata. And then I want to think of sometimes I'm going to take that to the next level. I'm going to include maps. Sometimes I'm including specifically what time it is and, um, and also that sort of general big picture what's been going on ecologically, say after the big rainstorm. You know, here I'm exploring these dunes. It's been an incredibly dry, warm winter. I'm out on a warm, sunny day and um, it's, 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 I'm wearing my t-shirt and it's, it's, it's February 12th. So, um, all of that stuff is relevant in my metadata. So I'm going to start here just by dropping in my metadata. You may sometimes start your journal page just by, oh my gosh, the ducks are doing something cool. Get all your information down about the ducks, then add the metadata later. I'm starting off today by adding in all my metadata and then I'll be exploring these dunes, um, around that information. You get to choose sort of the order of these, but having that metadata in on your page is a, is a very useful thing. Also, you might find that sometimes it's hard to get started on a brand new white nature journal page. If that's the case, then starting with your metadata is a really good idea because it kind of breaks in the page. It gives you something on the page. I've got my location. I've got maybe a little map drawn. Okay, now it's easier for more stuff to follow in after that. I'm going to add one other fun thing into my metadata that I'm going to show you in just a moment. Another way of recording information about where you are and when you are observing something is if you see the moon, include the moon on your nature journal page because the moon actually looks different at different latitudes on the earth. So if I were in, I'm in the Northern hemisphere here. If I were looking in the Southern hemisphere, my view of the moon would actually be upside down from what I'm seeing right now. That's come, that's really cool. So I am by, by including information about what I see in the moon, I'm recording information about where I am on the planet. And if I record information about what phase it's in, that's another neat way of recording some when. Your nature journal challenge for this week is to improve the quality of the metadata information in your own nature journal. Think about the location data that you're including on your page. Is just writing my backyard going to be enough? Think about the perspective of a scientist or a historian who might be using your notes 100 years in the future. What are they going to want to know? You can have a lot of fun adding location information in, in creative ways. Maps are a great way of doing that. And the more you do it, the better you're going to get at making maps.
And so too with the when information, as we date stamp our nature journals, we want to think of, is date enough? Sometimes, sometimes it is. Other times we want to include information about the, the, the time or the big picture ecological events that are going on. This is after an intense heavy rainstorm or last night was a heavy frost. That sort of context we can also include in the fabric of our nature journal metadata notes. And it just makes the, the specific things that you are recording from this moment make a little bit more sense in that context. See what happens when you intentionally include this sort of metadata information on the pages of your own nature journal. And until next time, this is your Nature Journal Connection.